Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned, WebGL Series Episode 71. We're going to be looking at having multiple objects to the screen at the same time. So, this is going to be more consistent with what you're going to see in like a, uh, a game or something like that where you're trying a lot of objects out. And so let's just go ahead and see how it goes. Uh, we're going to have a new array here within our app in our global state called Objects. And this is what we're going to end up putting everything into. In our cube here, we've added an ID uh, just for convenience sake, and it's uh, with a function called UUID. That was taken from this Stack Overflow post here, and you can take a look at that post if you'd like. And I'll show you the function in a little bit. Scrolling down here, you can see that we've removed the selection color, um, but we are still going to be end up selecting things, and I'll show you how we do that in a moment. So we're going to have this optional passing in a cell color. Uh, given a basic array of four elements for the RGBA. And if we don't have one, we're just going to set it to black. Um, and then we've changed the name of this function, so now it's read state and draw state. And we're going to still be selecting, putting the A cell color to the color and the backup and vice versa. And then when we initialize, we're going to take that cell color and map all of those functions divided by 255 and then building out the attributes for that. And so this is just a little uh, kind of a wonky syntax, but just to build out the basically this right here, um, but for a selection color that's been provided by the consuming application. And I'll show what that looks like in just a moment. So this allows us to have the A cell color and make it be dynamic as it's provided by the app. So down here in init state, when we get down here, we now have a couple of objects. And we're going to go ahead and set those objects. And we could have just uh, appended those since we already had an array, but we're just going to set it as a new array. We're going to have one cube, which is defaulted, and a second cube that has this optional cell color, like I said. And it's just going to be a, kind of a random uh, functionality here, or random RGB. And we can go ahead and uh, make that programmatic if we like to, but any values between 0 and 255, um, which is the limit for RG and B, and then for the example, we're just going to arbitrarily translate one of the cubes. So we'll use a mat4 and translate the state uh, of the model matrix, which, if you recall, is every model uh, object has its own model matrix. That'll store all of the translations there. So we're just going to translate one uh, in the direction of the x value of 3. So uh, let's go ahead and scroll down and see what happens for the rest. All the draw and everything like, like that looks the same until we get down to here. So we're, we're, that, what we're going to do now is we're going to take every single object in the state app objects array, grab it and render it, and then go ahead and uh, set the uniform matrix and draw the elements out for it, um, given the object's state model matrix. So uh, that allows us to draw every single object in an iterative approach. And then let's just go scroll down here. We can do this uh, for each object as well. And we're going to go ahead and set everything into the read state, and then we'll set it into the draw state afterward with a draw in between. We have a new function here called pick objects, and what that's going to do is it's going to take the pixels and map them to divide by 255, like above. And within the app of objects, we're going to go ahead and find where all of the the length is the same, and then every pixel is the same as the selection color pixel as well. So we, we know that each object's cell color is going to be provided as a state of four uh, digits within an array. Um, and if you don't recall what that is, is, that's this right here. So we're going to now be comparing the pixels returned from the mouse click, which are converted to being divided by 255, and comparing those to the cell color ones. And if every element is the same and it's the same length, we know we've selected a particular object. So once we do that, we can say cube with the ID has been selected. And here's the UUID function, which was taken from that Stack Overflow play, uh, post. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. Got a couple of cubes here. And now when we click one, we can go ahead and see we have cube da -da 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 selected. Uh, I've also added it so that when you select it, 
uh, we're going to go ahead and translate it. So you can see that we know which one we're actually translating. It's not me arbitrarily translating both. So you can see which key was being selected, their ID, and then you can do something with the selected object. So, uh, and obviously in games and all that kind of things, you can, you know, uh, shoot things or you can select objects and move them around, uh, build things, whatever the game may play. So, uh, anyway, that's it for this episode. It's a little bit more complex. Take your time to let it sink in. Uh, and uh, give me a like if you can, if you'd like to. <laughs> Uh, subscribe. Both of those will help me a lot on YouTube, uh, as well as uh, going to programmingtil.com, signing up for my newsletter, and sharing this on social media. Have a great one. Thank you.